Okay, hello everyone. In this particular session, we will discuss primarily about what is uh, what is a schedule and how do you work with it. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Amit Dhuvan. Till now, we have discussed primarily about what is a transaction, what are the properties of transaction, asset properties, atomicity, consistency, isolation, durability. We have also seen many a times that uh, why do we need a transaction? At the same time, what are the different states in which transaction work? We also worked and looked ahead that what is the storage which are there, we have seen what is needed inside. We also looked ahead that uh, we need concurrent transactions, we need to execute the transaction concurrent fashion to improve the performance, reduce the response time. We also seen that when multiple transactions work, the order in which they are executed inside the processor, on the processor, is called as a schedule. So look at that, both the different uh, order in which the transaction work, even though individually they are same, but still we say that they are two different schedules because the order in which chronological order in which they are working on the processor is different. Now if you look closely, if the one set of instruction executes beforehand and the other set of instruction that means transaction 1 completes before the transaction 2 starts or vice versa, then we can say that the asset properties are guaranteed because if one set of instruction starts, one transaction starts and before another transaction starts, the first transaction commits. At that point of time, no way on earth that if there is a failure and we are violating any asset property. If you don't think for it, consider an example that there is a failure after any instruction. Now either it has already committed the previous transaction or the other transaction or it has not committed and at that point of time all the instructions are rolled back. Now in that state we will say that there is no, there is no worry uh, for us that uh, if two instructions are working, they are working one after another, then they will always follow um, the asset property. Now consider this scenario in which the two transactions are working one after another and there is a dirty read. Uh, that means one transaction reads that item written by somebody else. Now that is a dirty read because the other transaction has changed the data, has written back and the, the, uh, the first transaction has read that data item. Here the transaction one has written that item A and the transaction 2 has read it. After a point of time, this is related because transaction 1 has not committed yet. So if there is a failure in transaction 1, the transaction 2 also needs to roll back because it has read something from the transaction 1. If it does not roll back transaction 2, now whatever that item transaction 2 has read and made changes upon, this is going to be inconsistent one because the finally, after a point of time, the, there is a rollback in transaction 1 instruction and those instructions are, uh, are, are primarily redundant one because it has been rolled back. So it will violate the consistency. You, you need to understand that point of care. So because we have no control of that what is the steps in which uh, chronological order in which transaction 1 and 2 will execute, but we need to ensure still and we need to make sure that when they are working in a, in a serial manner as the properties are followed. So if I say that the transactions or the schedule in which the transactions are interleaved, the result is the same as a serial schedule, then I am okay to say that this interleaved schedule is also following the asset property. Otherwise, I have to check everything manually one by one. So for us, the schedule in which the instructions are working in an interleaved fashion, on those steps, if we say that the answer is equivalent to a transaction in the, the final step which is equivalent to the output of the serial transaction then it is okay. So for us we need to make sure that the interleaved transaction which is for us is equivalent to a serial transaction. So then we select is it a serializable schedule or not that means the transaction it will work as it is but the output is equivalent to a serial schedule. So how do we ensure the output we may swap certain transactions, swap certain instructions. Still I want to point out that the operations will still work on in the processor at what is specified, but by swapping, we can say that it is giving the same result as the previous one. That is, uh, we say that a serializable schedule. Now, in this schedule, what we cannot swap is the conflicting operation. What is the conflicting operation? Operation in which there are two different transactions, both of them are working on the same data item, and one of them is a write. One of them is right, both of them can also be right as well. So at least one of them is right, there are two different transactions working on the same data item. Those operations we cannot swap and 
because we cannot square we might not be able to prove that they are uh, equivalent to a consistent equivalent to a uh, serial schedule so now uh, we we have to say that if a transaction or a steps of transaction in a schedule which by swapping non conflicting operation is making a serial uh, schedule in which the transactions are working in a serial manner then we say that the first set of schedule or first schedule is a conflict serializable serializable schedule because we are swapping non conflicting operation now in this point of time just i would like to say that if we keep on swapping we will still get some answer but there is a faster way that we can draw the precedence graph as well what is a precedence graph so look at that in this point of time if you want to ensure the precedence graph here uh, i will i will use the precedence graph and uh, at that point of time um, I, will, I will i will still be working towards um, drawing an arrow from all the conflicting operation uh, in the chronological manner so if i say that to draw precedence graph here there is there is conflicting operation from t1 to t2 because there is a read a and there is a write a in t2 so we have an arrow from t1 to t2 because t2 happens after and similarly form the second set of operations as well now in this point of time i would be very confident to say that because there is a no cycle because t1 to t2 is there only t2 to t1 is not there that t1 and t2 are transactions this is where we can say that this set of operations is uh, a serializable schedule and t1 happens before t2 in the serializable schedule now this is conflict serializability that the operations which we saw before is equivalent to giving result as this serial schedule then we can say that it is a conflict serializable schedule that is what i just want to share with you okay yeah okay we did that yes you want concurrency and in concurrency we say that the skewed schedule which has equal to schedule which is happening one by one by swapping non conflicting operations we can come to a serial schedule original one is a conflict serializable schedule because of which it follows the asset property so for us the task is very simple let's ensure that the original schedule is conflict serializable and how do we ensure that we swap non conflicting operations or we draw a precedence graph and then we say it is then it is a conflict serializable schedule or not then there is another property which says that is it view serializable or not so view serializability means that okay if there is a blind write that happens so understand in this particular scenario there is a blind write that means there is a write that is happening in a transaction which has not read that particular data item so that's a blind write and because of blind write it may be possible that few of the schedules which give the same result are non swappable they are having conflict so we still can have a broader way of uh checking that both the transactions are still following the asset properties by using the uh by using the standards which are given in the view serializability so to check view serializability all the transactions which are conflict serializable are view serializable and the transactions which are not conflict serializable and have a blind write then we will check if they are view serializable or not for checking view serializability we will see that initial read for every data item happens in the same transaction as in the serial schedule every write for the same data that item happens by the same transaction in the serial schedule and the intermediate reads are the same so here we still have to check for all the possible operations for equivalence so we have a schedule which is given we'll check with the different different schedules to see if both of them are equivalent or not and how do we check we check by seeing that the initial reads are same for every data item in the same transaction so if transaction 1 reads a first in the serial schedule transaction 1 is reading the a data item first final writes that means a is written by transaction 2 in the first transaction in the first schedule a is written by the transaction 2 in the serial schedule as well and intermediate reads are the same so if you follow the same thing then it is view serializable as well but make sure that before checking view serializability because it's a lengthy process we have to check all different possibilities then it is important that first of all check for conflict serializability if it is conflict serializable then definitely it is view serializable as well and if it has a blind write and it is not a conflict serializable schedule then check for view serializability so that was something we need to check for it and draw the precedence graph and then we keep on working towards it so that was something we looked at uh, in this particular session Thank you very much.